many questions about whether we should be getting the vaccine or not. Well, what about if you have cancer or you have had cancer or you're the healthy person around someone that may have cancer? Lots of questions we want to ask Dr. Lewis with Intermountain Healthcare Oncologist. Hi, Dr. Lewis. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Jenny. Let's start first things first. If you currently have cancer, can you get the vaccination? You can, and you almost certainly should. So it's okay. interesting. Obviously, we've had an entire year now to learn about how is risk relative to cancer and COVID? And when it first hit, when the pandemic first arrived, we had some real concerns. In fact, there were early yeah. reports from China, where obviously we first learned about this, that cancer patients were doing five times worse with the virus than the normal population. And by five times worse, I mean five times more likely to end up in the hospital, five times more likely to be on a ventilator, and five times more likely to die. So that was, as you can imagine, extremely alarming. But then we started looking at the experience here in America and at Intermountain, we've actually contributed to a national database that really covers the entire country. And what we've learned is if you have cancer or have had cancer, you are at higher risk, thankfully not fivefold the risk than the average population, but it doesn't seem to matter whether you're on chemo or not. So okay. the good side of that is that people who are requiring treatment can continue those treatments. But the downside is even people who are past their treatment and in remission can't be complacent and we still have to protect them too. Well, and I think that goes along with then, you know, speaking to the people who are healthy, may not be experiencing cancer at all, but you're around someone or just, you know, walking out in public, we right. should be getting it too. So if I can make one point there, it is uh, a fallacy, it is a myth that patients with cancer are visible to others. So thankfully, very, very few of the treatments I give these days cause hair loss. So I think there's this kind of traditional vision of the yeah, cancer yeah. patient having you know, lost their hair, maybe pushing an IV pole in a hospital. Most of these people look just like you do, and they mm -hmm. are walking among us in our communities and at the grocery store. So I think there is almost an obligation, of course, to protect ourselves, to, but you know, to protect these people too. And here's the other good news. By getting vaccinated, once your immunity matures, which should be roughly two weeks after the second shot of either Pfizer or Moderna, you are 90% less likely to transmit the virus. So we have a radical opportunity here to decrease infection in our community. Because if you're 90% less likely to be giving it to someone else, everybody is benefiting from that protection once you get your shots. Yeah, and we can all go on, you know, living life a bit more normal, right. back to that normalcy that we have lost. So if they want more information, I know there's so many questions about all this, your website for more info. Exactly right. So you want to go to Intermountain Healthcare. We have plenty of resources. We really try to stay up to date because as you can imagine, things look different this month than they did last month and certainly a year ago. But I'm really excited. I think Utah is really um starting to show great uh, uptake uh, of the virus. And I think the fact that it's gonna be open to nearly every adult as of April the 1st is a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dr. Lewis, thanks for uh, answering some of those questions. We appreciate it. Thank you.